Today, we're taking a look at the Flywoo Cinerace 20 V2. And this is an interesting drone because Cinerace, is it a cinematic drone? Is it a racing drone? What type of drone is this? It's actually a sub 250 gram, two inch micro Cinewoop with the O3 air unit, with a GPS, and some interesting features that I want to talk about. Let's check it out. So this is my very first time actually checking out a Flywoo drone. Uh, they've been around for quite some time now, but it, it is my first time uh, having one in my hands. And as we all know, these sub 250 gram drones with the O3 air unit are all the craze now. Everyone uh, is making one. I've already made videos on similar drones such as the iFlight Defender 25, the Gap RC Cinelock 20, and now this Flywoo Cine Race 20. And they all serve the same purpose, which is to be flown indoors and also outdoors as long as it's not super windy. They have great uh, flight characteristics for such tiny drone. They are lightweight and because they are sub 250 grams you can actually fly them close to people and close to other objects so that opens up the possibilities a little bit more and because of that O3 air unit on board you don't have to use an action camera on them which is pretty cool because you can use the onboard footage from this air unit to record with. Now this drone is trying to beat the competition by doing a, a few other things on top of that uh, as it comes with a GPS module here on the top of the camera which is very very visible. Now I would say that this is definitely not needed for a sub 250 gram drone. The extra weight of the GPS could have been saved and you really don't need GPS on such a small drone because you're not going too far with it anyway so why would you need your GPS coordinates on your screen on the goggles and why would you need to set up GPS rescue? I don't see the point to be honest, uh, plus it's really not ideal in terms of how this drone looks, it's just plastered on top of the camera which is definitely not a good look in my opinion, doesn't look that attractive, that appealing in terms of just overall looks compared to the competition. And besides that you also have these giant ducts that are uh, surrounded by foam so if you happen to bump into something the foam will take the hit and you should be good to go. These drones can actually really take a beating before anything uh, breaks on them. When you flip the drone upside down you will see the pusher design of this drone meaning that the props are spinning from the bottom of the drone making it a little bit more effective and efficient in the air and you will see the port for the stack which is micro USB. I really wish companies would move away, step away from making these micro USB uh, stacks nowadays because it's, it's just not convenient anymore. Speaking about cables, Flywoo actually provides a cable that is 90 degree oriented so you can uh, actually connect it to the air unit otherwise it's impossible you need to completely disassemble the drone so you can access uh, the O3 air unit to transfer your footage so at least they have thought about that I wish they thought about making the stack USB-C as well but that's not the big issue here. Uh, the big issue I noticed with this drone is the flight performance and when I say the flight performance I don't mean that this drone doesn't fly well it's actually a good performing drone for the most part uh, but when I went to fly with this drone I noticed straight away in my goggles that this drone has jello um, from the camera and when you see the way this is mounted probably this will explain why that is. You see there is a TPU mount for the camera which doesn't really look that polished, uh, especially when compared to the competition, the, the Cinelog 20, the Defender 25, they have all uh, come up with different ways of mounting the camera that is far more good looking and far more well working uh, in a way that doesn't lead to any jello, doesn't lead to any movement from the camera at all and no vibrations are actually going through uh, the camera that will eventually ruin your end shots. So this was the case unfortunately with the Cinerace 20. I'm not sure if all the Cinerace 20 uh, drones like this one are having the same issue as mine but I noticed there is uh, a little bit of jello inside my footage which 
was definitely not a good feeling when I came back home trying to stabilize the footage uh, coming out of the O3 air unit. So that's definitely something that I need to mention because if you are planning to buy this drone, you might end up having the same problem. One thing I can say for sure that I definitely like about this drone is the flight time. I tested it with 850 milliamp hour battery which is a little bit heavier. Flywo actually recommends 750 milliamp hour battery for this one, uh, but it's, I still got a lot of flight time out of the, each battery that I tested this drone with. So they advertise about eight minutes of flight time with a 750 uh, battery. I got a little bit less than that because of that extra weight of my heavier battery, but I still think this drone is very, very efficient. And as long as you don't, try to do a lot of acro with it, you can achieve that same flight time with it, which is definitely a great, great thing to have. Another thing which I really like about this drone is the fact that it comes with a 128 gigabyte SD card already installed on the O3 Air Unit. And this drone also comes with a very, very, very bright LED strip going around the, the edge of the, the frame. And it's very, very visible. It's very powerful and you can see it pretty much anywhere you go, even in bright sunlight. It's easier to find in case you happen to crash it because of that uh, LED uh, strip. It's very, very bright and easy to spot on the ground. It's interesting to notice how the receiver was mounted on the back of the drone. It doesn't give you that polished feeling that all the other drones, uh, the pre-built drones that we're buying nowadays uh, can give you. Uh, this one looks a little bit more, you know, just, handmade by someone who is not a professional. So I just don't like the look of this drone too much. It doesn't look that, it doesn't have that polished feeling uh, that nowadays some companies have moved to, to creating a higher spec, better looking drone uh, compared to what they were making before. This one looks kind of dated and not that good looking, if you get what I mean. There really isn't that much else to say about this drone. Uh, I'm actually thinking about uh, moving on from these sub 250 gram drones uh, because they are so similar, they all perform great uh, and they all have their pros and cons. This one had a big con when talking about the Jello uh, and I wouldn't say it looks the best out of the three that I've tested so far. It probably looks the worst, but it performed very, very well uh, in the air, um, minus the jello, of course, and the flight time was great. But that's pretty much it from today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions about the Cinerace 20, and I'll see you in my next one very, very soon. Ciao.